week's video, I'm rolling with Evie. Mm -hmm. Evie was a fan of the channel who didn't realize I was training at his school. Well, he did. He noticed, you know, the, the familiarity of the school. And then he sent me a message and we chatted a little bit, but we had never met. So he's oh, about a six month white belt, a one stripe. Uh, I guess my school does give out stripes. I, I didn't really know. I think it's for just the lower belts. So there was a nice sweep just to get things started. I'm trying to go easy. There he did the typical reaction that someone would do there. They'd go to sit up. There I was able to trap his right arm with my right leg, making it very easy to finish the choke here. But I don't finish it. And he made a joke. He said, you let me out of that, didn't you? Something to that extent. But I'm not looking to choke out a white belt quickly. I think it would be more beneficial for both of us to continue the roll. So here I let him turn into me to be back in my full guard. Now, AV is, I believe, 26 years old and about 165 pounds. So he's a little bit lighter than me. There I was able to sweep him over. I didn't even come up on top to capitalize on it. Then when he came to, to sit back up, I did an arm drag. And then he turned back into my full guard. Here I have him in a collar choke. You can't see it, but my left hand has his collar wrapped around this choke. So it's an improvised choke. And there he taps. I said I didn't think he was going to tap. My fingers were getting tired. <laughs> That's the problem with collar chokes, by the way. If you don't get them perfectly and you really have to pull, they are hard on the fingers. The same way as uh, grabbing his collar and, try and never letting go no matter what he does as he's trying to break your grip. If you, if you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to have arthritis one day. If I have somebody's collar and they, break and they go to do, do a grip break, I let go. And go to something else. <clears throat> so this is his first round. And uh, he's excited about it. So I'm trying to roll with him in the educational white belt role the way you should roll with the new white belt. I mean, six months isn't that new, but you know what I mean. In the bigger scheme of things, five years is new. So here I have him in a Kimura, and I was able to get the sweep. It was either that or finish. But he held on, so I was able to just roll him over. I kicked him over with my other leg. This is a move. I mean, I don't do it often. I would do it often if people gave it to me more often. But it is a common move for me. On the wall are the signatures of all the black belts at the school. I kept, uh, you know, meaning to mention that, and I kept forgetting. So I thought that was pretty cool. It would be an honor to have my name up there one day with all those devoted martial artists. So here I'm telling him the key is to pull my arm across his body and to pull his legs up so that way I can't simply pull my arm back because his body would be blocking it. And it does, it's not a matter of strength. There's my professor, fourth degree black belt, Mike Codella. So here I let him start from, from that position, from my back, basically. And he's trying to go to mount. What I find, not only with him, but with a lot of players, is if I could stop them from getting to a dominant position, I know that, like, they might not really have any chance. But if you start or let them get to a dominant position, you could get finished. Gary Tonin once said, I tap out so much at my gym, people think I suck. 
But what he does is he puts himself in bad positions and then guys finish him sometimes. But he's still getting the benefit of learning the technicality there. John Donahar once said that, uh, he goes, a guy will visit the gym and be like, I just submitted Gary Tonin. <laughs> and John just laughs. Did you? So here, what I'm trying to do is just get out with as little effort as possible by arching my back and making proper frames. I'm not hip bumping. I'm not thrashing. I'm not doing a lot of the regular traditional escape. I'm trying to do like a no effort, arch my back, put, push my knee, get his leg back into my guard type of escape. I don't want to come up from here out of breath. But Avi's doing a good job of containing me. So I did get his leg back here into a quarter guard. But his pressure's pretty good. He, you know, he's doing a good job. Like, I didn't just get out as easily as I thought I could have with no effort. So here, as you can see, I have my frames again. Slide your knee up my back. Yeah, see? Look, again, look. I'm stuck again, right? That's going to be easy for you to armbar me. Because I have nowhere to go. Right? So here, I'm giving him a pointer on the armbar. And I'm going to let him start from here. And even though I'm letting him start, you know, it's disadvantage, uh, bad position for me, I'm still not trying to explode out of it or do anything I can. Like, God forbid, I'm in the spider web of this white belt. He had the right idea how he pushed my elbow with his right hand. He should have done more of that. You could actually do a little palm strike to the elbow and finish the armbar there. So see here, he, he makes the mistake of taking the pressure off, and it allows me to sit up. Now I'm in his full guard, and that's not really what I want, but it gives me time to rest, especially if I'm the better wrist fighter, which I am. So there I threaten the wrist lock. I would never really finish it. I just want him to know it's there. Gary Tonin submitted, uh, I think, Mateus with a wrist lock. So uh, if you can submit somebody that's that good with a wrist lock, because your elbow in certain positions has nowhere to go, and it makes it easy to finish. So here I'm telling him if he has closed guard and, there's, and he's losing the wrist fighting, the best thing to do is open your guard and go to an open guard. Put your feet on the hips, put your feet on the bicep, put your foot on his shoulder, make your frames. So now we're going another minute. I'm letting him put me back in the closed guard, or I'm just saying we should start from there again. So now he's thinking about dragging my arm across. He's starting to, to have better jiu-jitsu IQ in that position. See, see here, he let me grab his head. That's always a mistake with the right arm. I notice a lot of people give that. They don't realize how important it is. So here, I'm gonna turn my left knee up towards the ceiling, and I'm, I'm telling him that. I'm telling him, because he felt his hooks pop off, and I'm explaining exactly why. Here, I was able to slide my knee across and go to mount and finish with an Ezekiel. That's my new thing, guys. I'm working on the Ezekiel. Um, I was never really, I don't think I've used it much, you know, and I realize it's such a great tool uh, in no gi and gi. Gi being, you know, better. So that's Avi, and that's Avi. Now, I'm not sure if Avi has a video on the channel. He's a good purple belt. Yeah, we call it Jewish. 
sociology. And they should use it in young women who somehow know either each other or right. someone that they hold. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, we got like somebody. He knows somebody. He knows you. Now I'm telling him as a white belt, he did a really good job in keeping me on the bottom in that position. So look more forward to more with Avi. We're going to make him a star and see his progress. I'm sure it'll be uh, plenty. There'll be plenty of progress from Avi. But thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, you could either buy me a coffee or there's a link for X Marshall. Any gear you buy on there, you get 15% off with Jits over 50. And uh, they also have a custom rash guard. You can make whatever you want. As long as you use my link, I also make a little something off it. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you.